Today's horror manga dub and narration is Forgotten Milk from the anthology A Hundred Ghost Stories of My Death by Matano Anji. If you enjoy the story at any point in time, please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into this ghost story. What kind of place do people go to when they die? Is it somewhere where they're alone in the cold dark? Doomed to wander for all eternity? When a person dies, do they feel hopeless and forlorn? Do they just go crazy? Or do they attach themselves to an unwilling host? Shuzue, come here for a second, says a ghastly figure causing the lady to scream and tear and run away. In the last case, you would think you'd be safe as long as it didn't chase you down. A man sits at the table as his girlfriend opens up the refrigerator. Hey babe, I thought I told you to go out and buy milk. Uh-huh. Realizing that her boyfriend is ignoring her, she leaves the house in a rageful flounce. Whatever. Hey, where are you off to? The store. The clock continues to tick as it takes his girlfriend longer and longer to return. Realizing that it is taking her a little too long, our protagonist begins to worry. Hmm, she's late. Man, I guess off to bed I go. He expatiates as he lathers his toothbrush with toothpaste when all of a sudden, a strange silhouette appears outside the door. As he brushes his teeth, the figure slowly emerges. It appears to be his girlfriend, but something seems off about her, something inexplicable. When he finally notices her, the shock causes him to choke on his toothpaste and spit it outward. He can't understand why she wouldn't have just said something as not to scare him. But she simply stares at him, her eyes gazing all about his body as if looking into his very soul. What? What? What the hell, Yuki? You should have said something if you were back. Mashiro, come here. As she beckons him to follow, Realizing she isn't wearing any clothes, and thinking that perhaps she wanted to get frisky, he states, I'm sorry Yuki, but I'm already going to sleep. Mashiro. Hey, did you not hear what I just said? Come here. Clearly, something isn't right about her. Her eyes are otherworldly massive, and her teeth gargantuan as she shrieks. Mashiro, get over here. Come here, Mashiro. She slams her hand against the door rapidly, hoping to get him to follow, as the tone of her voice becomes deeper and more sinister. Come on, Mashiro. <sighs> Despite the boyfriend not moving a muscle, the entity simply hides behind the door and softly whispers, Mashiro, come here. Uh, who, who are you? The immeasurable amount of fear causes him to be unable to move, as if he was paralyzed, when he hears a clacking of the door and his girlfriend's voice emerges. I'm home. Yuki, thank goodness it's you. Come here, there's some strange woman. Mashiro. As the front door opens, his girlfriend emerges until her eyes once again become wide-eyed. Her dark, beady pupils expand to unhuman size as she mutters, If only you hadn't forgotten the milk. Unable to utter a single word, he simply sweats in silence until interrupted by the sound. The ringing sound he is hearing is coming from his cell phone, 
his cell phone within his pocket. He picks up the phone. H hello Yes, this is, but... It's about Yuki Shinodo. She was outside a convenience store near XX Station and was involved in a traffic accident. She was transported to the hospital by ambulance, but unfortunately she wasn't able to make it. Her death was confirmed a minute ago. Wait, I don't know what you're talking- I understand how this must feel, sir. That's not it! I can see Yuki, she's right in front of me, right now as we're speaking. Then, just like that, his phone hangs up. As Yuki glares at him, glares at him from behind the door. This has got to be, it's got to be some kind of twisted joke. He says as he walks over to the door, twists the handle, and opens it. But what he sees is the most wretched, vile sight. The entire side of her body is completely mangled, the flesh torn from her skin, and her brain exposed. Her entire essence stained and violated by crimson blood. As her eyeball rolls out of her body, our protagonist yells from the top of his lungs and begins to sweat profusely as he slams the door shut and quickly locks it. He immediately runs throughout the house, shutting every door and entrance, running toward a nearby window to ensure that they are also shut and locked. Furthermore, he pushes all the furniture against each and every entrance to ensure that there is no way whatever that entity may be can pursue him. <sighs> that, that should, it should be good now. There we go. No matter where she tries to come in from, she... Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching, I hope you liked the video, if you did, please don't forget to comment and tell me that you like this format so I know to keep making these type of videos, and don't forget to like and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and remember, you're important and you matter. Have a great night everyone, goodbye.